What's going on guys? So today we're going to be working on the 2010 Yamaha Grizzly. Last video I did of this was actually prepping it to sell it and as you can tell did not sell it. Now it's not because no one wanted to buy it. It ended up being, it is my dad's four-wheeler actually, not mine. I just work on them but he decided he wanted to keep it and I was like you know what that's cool with me as long as I get to ride it because I'm working on it. So I was totally cool with him keeping it because that means I get the ride as well because I work on it. So last year did not have a four wheeler for the winter time. This year we're going to have one, which is awesome because last winter, two winters ago, I had a four wheeler with the plow on it. And the winter before that I had a different four wheeler, but with the same plow. And I'm looking forward to this winter because I bought a plow for this guy. But that's not in today's video. Today's video is actually going to be working on the carburetor because it's been giving us a little issues. It's been getting, it'll warm up. Once it's warm up, it'll sit at higher RPMs, which is a no good because then you cannot shift it out of forward into neutral or into reverse. And when you're plowing, you're going forward, backward, forward, backwards constantly. So we need to be able to do that. At least I'll need to be able to do that while I'm plowing. So let's get into it. Let's start taking the thing apart and see how dirty the carb is. All right, so just took the plastic covering off. As you can see, there were four hex bolts, one here, one up here and then same thing on the other side and now we're going to take the gas tank off and I don't know why but I forgot that you have to remove the gas tanks and I just filled it up to the top but luckily the valve should work the petcock valve and we're going to remove these four bolts right here one here one here and then same thing on the other side and I believe they're 10 millimeter but I will correct myself if they are not but I think they are. But let's take this off and get to the air box and then the carburetor. The back ones are 10, the front ones I think are eight. Yeah, the front ones are eight. Alright, just remove the fuel tank and I believe these sometimes do come off or slide off or they have a screw in there but I couldn't get it off so I finagled it out of there with this piece on the pet cock for the fuel tank so we got that sitting over there and then I cut the zip ties holding this plastic rubber cover thing on so we'll just pull these zip ties off I think that's all that's Oh, and then there's these things down here. And then this cover slides right off. Toss that over there. Then we have full access to the carburetor, top of the engine, air box, which looks like we're gonna have to probably get a new air filter because this one looks like it's seen better days. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll probably get a new one of that. Clean out the air box. Whoops. I'll get that later. So, clean out the air box. Clean out basically everything on here. So, it could be nice and clean. Might, might take this to the car wash or break out the pressure washer and then re-winterize the pressure washer. But, it would be nice to clean all this up. But, let's get the carburetor off and get that soaking in some chem dip or solution for about 24 hours seeing as how dirty it is and hopefully 
and then retune it and get everything good to go. So let me take the carb off and we'll go from there. All right, so next thing, once we get the air box off, we gotta disconnect the choke and throttle cable from the carburetor. So we just disconnected the throttle cable as I'm wiggling here in my right hand. And trick to do, loosen the cable as much as possible. So up on the throttle, on the handlebar, put, turn it so the cable goes all the way in and you should be able to get it loose and wiggle it off. And be careful because this little brass piece that's on the cable, as it focuses on it, you can lose this and it'll be a pain in the butt to find it. So just keep track of it. Put it somewhere where you're not gonna lose it or forget about it or where it's going to get lost. Next thing to do is the choke cable. So just remove all your vacuum lines, everything like that. Make sure you remember where they all go. Like this one down here is an overflow for fuel. It is currently pouring fuel out. The choke is gonna be a little bit easier. All you gotta do is unscrew it it's going to be kind of like a plastic bolt and then everything should just slide out wow there's a lot of dirt in the choke cable so that may have been the main culprit right there all right so we just got the carburetor off it is nasty it's filthy there's still fuel in it as you can see no, you can't. No, you can. My hand is covered in it. No one light a match by me. All right, so we got the carburetor here. Next thing to do, we're going to kind of disassemble everything off of it because when we put it into the chem dip, anything rubberized, you kind of don't want to have on there because, well, it could eat through it. Anything plastic, it could hurt it and we just want to clean all the metal parts. Okay, this is something I was afraid of. These screws usually get stuck and then you end up stripping them. So before I strip this one, I'm going to get vice grips and pop it off with those. Now with this, there will be springs and everything like that. So try and keep everything in order. And something else with these Yamahas, if this is your first time ever working on a Yamaha, they use, wow, there's like crud in here as well. They use diaphragm carburetors. So what that means is there's gonna be this thin rubber diaphragm, I mean, that's all I can say. <laughs> so there's going to be this diaphragm and the way it works with the vacuum, it's going to suck up. So when you open up the throttle, what it's doing, most cable drawn carburetors just pull this up when you pull the throttle, which lets in the air and the fuel. With diaphragm carburetors, it's all a vacuum system. So when you open the throttle, what the throttle is only doing 
is opening up this butterfly valve right here. So when you pull the throttle, sorry, it opens up the butterfly valve, as you can see, closed, open, and when it opens up that, it lets air flow in and pull this, suction this upward to release fuel in with the air into the mixture, which throws it all into the engine and makes it go boom, but a good kind of boom that we like and lets it drive. Now, if there's like a cut or a slit or this is like old and deteriorated, this won't suction up as well or won't have a suction. And that's what you're looking for with this. So if the diaphragm is damaged, which is a good time to inspect it, in any way, go ahead and replace it. This way it's gonna run a lot better. But this one's actually in pretty good condition. So we'll just set this off to the side for now and continue with the rest of this carburetor. Now we gotta take off the float bowl at the bottom. And then always keep track of the gaskets. Because again, that's something we don't want going in there. Next thing is we're going to want to take off the float itself. So let's pop the screw off. And what the screw holds is, well, the pin, as you can see right there, that little pin, this pin, and the float and the needle. Well, it's not really a needle, but this is all fairly clean. It's just kind of dirty, but I don't want to lose it in the chem dip, so we'll just take it out. So basically what we're trying to accomplish here is take everything apart that we possibly can so we can get the cleanest clean it can get. Now, like these little brass pieces, I don't want to put in there, and I'm just going to spray with carb cleaner later on after we put this whole thing in the chem dip. We just want to open up all the little passages so the fluid and the cleaning solution can get everywhere in every nook and cranny. Now here's another thing. This comes with, it opens up a second diaphragm again with another spring, as you can see there, don't lose it. Be careful with this diaphragm because it also acts as a gasket and you don't want to break it. Pull it out. Here you go. Set that aside. And we're good to go and throw this in the chem dip. Now let me now let me show you all my little pieces here. Top, middle, to bottom, and side. Keep all the screws kind of together. If you have to, take pictures, label things if you need to. Whatever is going to help you remember how it goes all back together. So let's throw this in the chem dip really quick. Okay, not really quick, but... Now, they say depending on how dirty it is, you can leave it in for a few hours. You can do it for 24, 48 hours. Now, seeing how dirty this thing is, we're gonna put this in here for about 24, maybe 30-ish hours, take it out, and then spray it all down with carb cleaner, put it all back together. Because, I don't know if you can see in there, but this thing is actually, oh, here we go. This thing's actually really dirty. So let's throw it in there, and let's leave it. Now I have put stuff in here for only about like a couple hours. And it has helped, but don't forget about it because honestly, I don't know what will happen, but just don't forget about it. So that's it for this video. We just put the carburetor in the chem dip. Next video, we'll be putting it all back together and back in the four wheeler. As far as this project over here goes, the SeaDo GSX, that's for another video. Once we get the four wheeler all done and set, we're gonna move on to this guy and well, 
It doesn't run. We need to make it run and make it run well so we can have fun with it next summer. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give it a dislike, but let me know in the comments what I can improve on for next video. And as always, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys later. Bye.